In Focus today, we are talking about the importance of voting and increasing voter registration and turnout. And I'm very pleased to have with us the new Dona Ana County Clerk, Scott Kraling. Scott, it is good to have you here. Thank you, it's great to be here. I appreciate the, the opportunity. Let's start with uh, voter registration. I mentioned earlier in the show that I am part of an election advisory committee working uh, with you and with uh, the county clerk's office and a number of other volunteers to try to increase uh, registration in our county. Yeah, you know, the idea came to me when um, I got to the clerk's office. I, um, I, you know, I, I thought about how complicated this project is. I mean, there's hundreds of moving pieces to an election and uh, we have great staff that is that is well trained and prepared to uh, to administer an election and make sure that all the pieces move but there's so much more than just administering the election you know we have to get out into the community and register voters we need to inform them we need to encourage them to make a plan and then ultimately we get we have to get them to get out and vote and those pieces don't really fit nice and neat into our office as, as easily as administering the election and making sure that there are poll workers at the locations, that there are supplies, and that everything um, kind of goes off the way that it's supposed to be. And so um, I took an experience that I had in the, the private world. I was in marketing before I, I got involved in, in government, and I worked at the Home Builders Association. Um, well, I'm sorry, I was a volunteer with the Home Builders Association for their showcase of homes. And I was on their committee for, I don't know, four or five years. And it's a, it's a group of volunteers that get together and they help the Home Builders Association implement this huge project. And during that time, there were like 60, 70 homes that would show up and you had to put signs up, you got to do all these things. And I just, I, I just thought that there was some value there to the idea of bringing together community partners to help us uh, with all the pieces of the, the election uh, process that, that our office can't necessarily do from being in the office. As you hinted in your answer, getting people uh, registered to vote is one thing, getting them out there uh, on election day or in the case of New Mexico during early uh, voting is another. And uh, you're, you're aware of this, the preliminary numbers uh, are, are not good if you believe that we ought to have just about everyone voting. Uh, you know, in the most recent election, only about 59% of the voting age population cast ballots nationally. Uh, I was surprised to see that even in a really good year, what was talked about as a good year, 2008, when then Senator Obama had an amazing uh, grassroots campaign, only about 62% of the voting age population cast ballots. What, what do you make of this and wh why is this happening and how do we change it? I think a big part of it is that uh, throughout the country we rely on campaigns to drive people to vote. Uh, election administrators, clerk's offices in New Mexico or really uh, you know throughout the country our, our job we've seen our job traditionally is the administrators of the election. We're there to make sure that all the, all the pieces are in place and that there aren't any problems for the voters and there's really nobody else except for the campaigns out there talking to people about why voting is so important. We almost just assume that it's happening. We assume that people are getting the education in high school. We assume that they're paying attention and um, and when, I think when we leave it to just the campaigns, we end up with different agendas. And I think we see it in the presidential election this last year. I mean, the, the, the agendas aren't necessarily always to encourage people to get out and vote and to believe in the process. And so um, I think that we need a more organized approach to uh, reminding people why voting is important and, um, and making sure that they have good and accurate information about the election process in general. And then ultimately, you know, a good unbiased uh, approach to getting them out to vote, making sure that they have a plan and helping them execute that plan. Well, as you know, we were really excited uh, early on before the election in Doniana County because we had a big jump in early voting. Why do you think the, the overall voting increase didn't match the increase yeah. that we had in the in the early vote. So, something that I think is is interesting. You mentioned the uh, the statistics in the in your last question about yeah, yeah. the nation the national um, the national numbers. One of the challenges that we have is getting good information and comparing apples to apples when we're talking about turnout. Um, and uh, sorry to go back real quick, but um, you know. Nationally, that, that may have been the, per, the percentage of voting age population. Here in Doniana County, in 2008, 61% of those that were registered voted. And believe it or not, this year, 64% of those who were registered voted. And so Doniana County's numbers didn't necessarily follow the national trend. 
Um, and I don't, you know, I, 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 have, I could speculate on a lot of different reasons why that, that might be the case, but I think that part of it is the fact that we are being aggressive in getting out into the community and talking to people about why voting matters. So it was a slight increase, a couple points. Yeah, but, and it, but early not. voting at one right. point it was like ten points. Oh, wasn't right. It? So yeah. early voting was huge. We yeah. had we had ten percent more uh, vote early this this year than than in the past. And um, you know, I, I think that part of that is that we're getting good information out to the community. Mm -hmm. We uh, we had the you know through the advisory council, we implemented a lot of great ideas to make sure that there's good, accurate information in voters' hands. And I think that we saw that pay off. Um, people are learning and and becoming more aware of all the different options that they have and all the different access opportunities there are to vote. And that, that ultimately, um, I mean, in, in the big picture, it's not election day anymore. Uh, we're we're, we're, we're kind of trained to think of elections as election day. And I really like to talk about it more as a season. This yeah. is election season. We've got 28 days of voting. And I think that we were successful in getting that information out into the community. And, yeah. and people like it because it's more convenient. It's yeah. easier. There aren't lines. You can do it at your own time. You can plan better around it. And so um, I think that the overall 64% turnout is, while not as high as I'd like it to be, it's a good, it's a good number. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we, that we beat the national average. Um, but as you point out, that's 64% of registered, registered voters. voters. Okay. Correct. As so opposed to the voting age population, which could really be anybody lower that's not number. registered. Right. Okay. right. But, in, but our election day number, while our election day number wasn't quite as big, it was still a big number in and of itself. Uh, we just had such a huge increase in early voting that you know, if, if it had matched, we would have been we would have been 70, 70 plus percent turnout, which yeah. was a great goal. And I don't have a problem setting that as our goal, if not higher. Um, but uh, but maybe not necessarily realistic for this for this year's election. Yeah. Now you know this, Scott. Some speculate that uh, FBI Director James Comey's announcement about the discovery of Clinton emails on one of uh, Anthony Weiner's computers may have depressed turnout. W what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think that there's a difference between campaigns and elections. And, um, you know, campaigns have agendas. And those agendas aren't always necessarily, let's increase conet, let's, let's increase turnout, let's get everybody to vote. Mm -hmm. You know, as election administrators, I think our, our, uh, our agenda ought to be to convince people that they ought to be participating in every election. Vote in every election that we have, especially these local elections where you have direct access to, uh, to the people that you're electing and they, they are making decisions on policies that have a direct impact on your life. Um, and so, you know, I think, that, I think that whenever I look at sensational stories like that, I think, uh, I think that there's an agenda there, and that there are, there are, they aren't always necessarily lined up with what I see as the most important. Problem. Are you concerned that this is sort of unresolved? The idea that you know you could have a government official say, you know, we found something, uh, don't know what it is. Uh, but uh, just wanted to let you know, since you're, you're voting right now, that, uh, hey, we, that we found something, and we, we may get to it before the election day, we may not. I mean, that, that concerns a lot of people. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I'll leave it to people above my pay grade to, to, to speculate on whether or not that was uh, a good thing or a bad thing for the director of the FBI to do just in the days leading up to the election. Um, I think that it's a fair, I think it's a fair um, uh, assessment of the situation to say that it had a negative impact, that it did discourage people from voting. Um, and I don't think that, I think that anything that tries to discourage people from voting is, isn't in line with what I think should be our agendas. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's concerning. Um, was it the right thing to do? You know, I don't have all the information. I'm not the expert, the FBI director. Gosh, we sure would hope that the FBI director wouldn't be um, trying to do something that would undermine the election ultimately. Okay. Uh, you note that, you know, regardless of who is running for president, and we only have a presidential election normally every four years, uh, this has been unusual. Who knows? Maybe it'll be <laughs> sooner. Uh, people uh, need to pay attention to local elections. We have some great recent data about this because we've had state races and city council races that were, were really decided by a handful of votes. Yeah, our school board elections as well. Yeah. And, you know, we have this, as you know, we have the school board election coming up on, uh, in, in February. In right? February, mm -hmm. and uh, early voting for that starts the, the um, January 13th, so we're excited about that. But you know, I, I just think that while yes, the presidential election is important, um, these local elections are, are just as important. Uh, these are, you're electing people to go and make decisions that directly impact your life on a daily basis. 
Um, we were at the, uh, the Mayfield High School um, earlier this week with, uh, with Mr. Morales' uh, in Lasse class. And uh, you know those students care about school, and they care, and, and the teachers care about schools, and I care about schools. My kids are in schools. My parents, you know, who don't have kids in schools, they got grandkids that are in schools. And um, you know, the, the school board is making very important decisions that affect our affect all of our lives. And you know, city council makes decisions that that affect our daily lives. And um, it, I think it's unfortunate that uh, that at least the existing circumstances are that we, we get so many people that pay attention to the presidential election and so few people that pay attention to these local elections that are here on the ground. I mean, these are the people that you can pick up the phone and you can call and they will come to your house and they will help you with whatever it is you need, whether they can, whether they can actually make a difference or they can just connect you with the person that can make a difference. These are our neighbors, these are our friends, these are people that, that can help us. And uh, we, I think more people ought to be voting in all these elections. In fact, I think everyone ought to vote in every election. And so um, that's, that's part of my goals as, a, as county clerk is to get that message out there and make sure people have accurate information so they can make a good plan and be aware of all of the uh, information that they need to vote in these local elections. And I could go on and on and I'll stop so you can go to your next question. <laughs> well, as you know, in February, we have a school election coming up in Las Cruces. I know that there have been efforts to consolidate elections in part because turnout for, for school elections is usually terrible. I mean, less than 10%. Right, yeah, definitely less than 10%. And, um, you know, I mean, I think that part of the problem is that we have elections in New Mexico that are kind of scattered around. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got over 30 different types of special districts that can tax us who have their own election laws. And so the consolidation effort, I think, is, is a good effort. Um, I think that maybe some of your, your viewers or you may remember that you know the Doniana Soil and Water Conservation District has had an election the last in the last four years that had really big turnout and um, they didn't have to come to us for help but they did come to us and we we tried to provide them with the resources that that we could to uh, to make it to to give voters access to uh, to voting um, but their rules are really they're out of date and we didn't have the ability to do things like early voting and. Um, so turnout was really was really uh, large on, on election day, and people had to wait in line for almost an hour in some cases, maybe even more. Um, so consolidation is all about really lining up all these different districts and all these different types of elections under one set of rules so that people know what to expect and they know that they can vote early, they know they can vote by mail, they know when election day is. And um, so we've, you know, we've got the, a unique set of rules, or not, I'm sorry, the same set of rules for all of these districts. Um, consolidate them all into a November election that happens the opposite year of a general election. So we're not talking about consolidating um, special district elections or school board elections or municipal elections into a general election. Uh, rather, it's the November of the um, when we have municipal odd, elections, odd yeah. number of elections, sure. right? Odd okay. numbered years, and so. Um, I think that that would make it easier for voters to understand and expect, uh, to know what to yeah. expect. And yes, I think that turnout would increase, um, but to me it's, it's bigger than that. It's also about efficient use of resources, making sure that voters have access, making sure there's a consistent set of laws, and also making sure that the people who are responsible for it are election administrators and not just boards. Okay. Let's talk about uh, voter fraud. Widespread studies show this is almost unheard of. But Donald Trump raised questions when he alleged with no proof that millions of people illegally voted in 2016. One of my goals as county clerk is to make sure that there's good, accurate information out in the community. That's why part of the reason why we put together the advisory council is to build community partnerships to help us get that information out. Um, and, and I think this is one of those subjects that that we, we do need to reach out into the community and make sure that they that, that people know what, what the real situation is. Um, you know, there's hundreds of moving pieces to an election, and um, there's no such thing as a perfect election because when you have so many people involved in it, so many, you know, we hire 250 people on an election day to administer an election. They work one day every two years. Um, so, uh, so there's no such thing as a perfect election. So anytime that there's one little piece that doesn't look right, um, we've got campaigns, and campaigns have different agendas who try to take advantage of that and make it seem as though there's something suspicious going on. Um, and so, yeah, I think that the, the Department of Justice did a study and found that uh, out of a billion of votes, there was 31 actual instances of voter fraud. Um, you know, that you're, uh, somebody is more likely to be struck by lightning 
uh, than actually impersonate a voter. Yeah. Uh, the the truth is that these these things don't happen. And if there's a, um, an allegation of trouble in New Mexico, by and large, just about every vote is you have paper backup up, right? Right, and that's actually great. New Mexico is one of the best states in the nation as far as our election laws are concerned. Um, paper ballots are, I think. Uh, are, are the, the best practice because we've got a backup and we can always go back yeah. and count the paper if something goes wrong with the machines. Um, and so, yeah, New Mexico's got, got great laws when it comes to access, you know, early voting, voting by mail. Um, and, you know, I think, I think what, we, what we tend to see when it comes to voter fraud or accusations of voter fraud is, is there's, a, there's an actual situation where something went wrong and somebody tries to take advantage of it. For mm -hmm. instance, in 2014, um, in a northern county, there was, uh, there was somebody that showed up to vote. When he got there, uh, he had already been flagged as having voted, and he was justifiably upset about it. He contacted the Secretary of State's office. One of the campaigns got wind of it. They, they swung into the community. They held a press conference saying, voter fraud, voter fraud, voter fraud. Uh, well, come, come to find out, there were 10 versions of this person in the voter registration database. Not exactly him, the 10 versions of the name. It was a poll worker error. Uh. What they did is they checked in the wrong person. And so, Rather than uh, getting good, accurate information out into the community about what happened, we had campaigns jump on it and take advantage of it, and all of a sudden put doubt into people's minds. And just like, just like, um, just like the FBI story or accusations of voter fraud, all these things really do is have a, a negative effect on people's attitudes towards voting because they just don't think that their vote's going to count. Yeah. And and the exact opposite is the truth their vote will count. In fact, the voting booth is the only place where my vote counts as much as yours. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how much money I make a year. It doesn't matter what my background was or, or, or what race I am. My vote counts just as much as yours. Okay. Some have expressed uh, fears that efforts will continue to try to make it harder for people to vote in some states in order to depress turnout, an intentional effort uh, by some politicians. Your thoughts on this? Well, I think there are people out there that don't believe in democracy. They don't believe that, that your opinion is as, as valuable as my opinion. And um, voting is a powerful act. Uh, in fact, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation right now about uh, voting being as powerful as it is if, if, if it wasn't that, if that wasn't the fact. Um, and so, you know, I think that there, I've heard people talk about the fact that they don't want everyone voting in every election. Well, I'm, you know, I'm of the belief that everybody has value and that no matter what your background is, no matter what your you know, existing circumstances are with your life, you have something valuable to contribute to the conversation about what the policies are that our local officials are, are enacting, about what the future of our community is gonna look like, and ultimately, these are the ideals that our, 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 our country was founded on. The idea that everybody has value and everyone ought to have the ability to participate in the process that determines their future. Okay. Besides uh, early voting, which, which a lot of people are really happy, including myself, that we have in New Mexico, and the recently uh, implemented online registration that we also have here, what would you like to see in New Mexico to improve voter access? You know, there's a couple of things that I think will be addressed this year. Um, I don't know that they'll pass the legislature, but you mentioned election consolidation, right? Uh, reducing all of the different little elections that we have throughout the, throughout the year, um, putting them all into one community election in a uh, in a in a uh, odd numbered uh, November. Um, that's so. That's one big improvement that we can make. But then there's even little improvements. You know, in New Mexico uh, election law, your employer has to give you two hours off on election day to go vote. Well, it's an election season. There's 28 days of voting. Why not extend that? Why not make it two hours during the season? You have two hours the entire 28 days. It doesn't have to be on election day. You know, maybe that will make it more accessible to folks that just, that just are busy. Um, so I bet there's a lot of people who didn't even know about the, the New Mexico law hour, that yeah. you just mentioned. Well, two and, hours. And, and see, and that's that's our that's one of the challenges. That's why you know I think that it's important that the clerk's office, um, you know, uh, adjust its its mission and its goals. I mean, we aren't just the people that administer the law. We aren't just those that uh, make sure that the rules are followed. Although th that's extremely important and. Um, I think over the last eight years, my predecessor, Lynn Ellens, who's my chief deputy now, uh, did a great job of training our staff and getting them prepared to do that. But there's a bigger piece, and that is, you know, if, if we have an election, if we have it by all the rules and two people show up to vote, I don't think that anybody would agree that that was a successful election. Well, the clerk's office shouldn't either. We need to make sure that we're getting good information out there. And so really, it's a three-step process. 
get you registered to vote, help you make sure that you have good information so that you can create a plan to vote, and then show up and vote. And all three of those, of those pieces are important to me and our staff and all of the plans that we're putting together okay. for, the next, for the next four years. Have about a minute left. Biggest challenges you see down the line for yourself and other county clerks? Well, the, our biggest challenge is getting accurate information into the community. And so that's why we're creating community partnerships and, and sharing good information. That's why the advisory council is important. That's why our uh, initiatives with uh, the public school districts uh, is important, that we can get uh, young people informed on, on why voting is important and get them involved and, and, and familiarized with the process. Uh, as young as possible. And so I think, I think it really comes down to information. I mean, the, like I said, the three-step process, registering, giving them, you know, getting people to make a plan, and that involves getting good information and knowing what's going on. Um, that's, that's, the, that's, that's at least the challenge that I'm looking forward to tackling. Well, thanks for sharing some of that information with our viewers, Scott. My pleasure, thank you for having me.